Reflectance Confocal Microscopy, Fundamentals and Principle in Skin Oncology. Reflectance Confocal Microscopy is an in vivo, non-invasive tool for imaging the skin in depth and at a microscopic resolution. Compared with other techniques such as ultrasound and optical coherence tomography, confocal microscopy allows a higher resolution, enabling to visualize the single cells but at a shallow depth, limiting imaging at 250 microns, corresponding to the superficial dermis. Let's see now how it works. A low power laser beam at near infrared wavelength penetrates the superficial layers of the skin. Reflected light returns to the detector filtered by a very small pine hole. This enables to obtain in focus horizontal scans of the tissue at very high resolution, similar to histopathology, as shown in this section of normal epidermis where hematocelin eosin, the color red one, is compared with confocal microscopy in black and white. Reflectance is generated by different structures. Melanin is the major source of reflectance, thus it resulted indicated in melanocytic tumor diagnosis. Different tools are available. The VivaScope 1500 is a larger probe, which enables to examine a wide skin area, whereas VivaScope 3000 is an handheld device. VivaScope 3000 provides real-time confocal images of a millimetric spot, useful especially for difficult-to-reach areas. Acquisition with 1500s requires the positioning of a metal ring on the skin. The probe will then engage the ring before starting the imaging process. This enables the pair of dermoscopic image with the confocal image. In the acquisition procedure, first the layer of interest is selected on the monitor, then the image scan can start for the acquisition of the large area of view. Imaging generates the creation of a mosaic of confocal images, corresponding to the previously acquired thermoscopic image. This is very important in order to have a good matching between the thermoscopic image and the confocal one. The exact correspondence between confocal mosaic and dermoscopic image enables the direct correlation of a single dermoscopic pattern with their corresponding cytological and architectural substrate. The first message is that RCM provides horizontal section of the epidermis and upper dermis at cellular level resolution. Melanin is a strong source of contrast, thus melanoma and pigmented lesion diagnosis represent one of the best applications. Let's move to the clinical application. Confocal microscopy can be applied in different fields, such as inflammatory skin diseases and cosmetology. However, its main application is in the diagnosis of skin tumor. Here, in this presentation, we'll see some application in skin tumors. Confocal microscopy is able to detect important histologic features for the diagnosis of melanoma in early stage. The key features for melanoma diagnosis are the presence of atypical cells, either within the epidermis corresponding to pagetoid cells or in the junction. This is a very important feature for melanoma diagnosis. Cells, in fact, could be roundish, polygonal 
or dendritic and stellate. They are usually characterized by a strong cytoplasmic reflectance and dark nuclei. Cell number, extent and polymorphism are important characteristics to achieve an accurate melanoma diagnosis. Architectural disorder corresponding to alteration of the dermal epidermal junction is the second most relevant feature for melanoma diagnosis. Using these fundamental features, it is possible to distinguish a dermoscopically atypical nevus, but constituted by discrete nest and without significant cytological atypia, from an early melanoma, usually characterized by atypical cells and junctional disorder. Here, an example of an atypical mole. At confocal, architecture is regular. And, at a close-up, no cytological atypia is visible, thus the diagnosis of a melanocytic nevus. Here we have another case, again with thermoscopic atypia. At confocal, architectural disorder and cytological atypia is detectable. Here we have a close-up image that shows abundant atypical cells and the pagetoid cells, prompting the diagnosis of a melanoma. In this slide, you can see the comparison between dermoscopic, confocal and histopathologic images of the two lesions. Overall, confocal microscopy alone shows the same sensitivity for melanoma diagnosis as dermoscopy, but with a much higher specificity. Thus, the combined use of the two technologies may help to reduce unnecessary excision. Concerning basal cell carcinoma, confocal microscopy is able to show tumor islands characterized by peripheral parisading and clefts. Basal cell tumor islands are easily detectable. In this image, on the left, there are tumor islands, easily detectable, characterized by palisading and the peripheral cleft. Also, enlarged blood vessels could be visible, especially during live images with the blood flowing inside. Here an example of a pigmented lesion. Thermoscopy is equivocal. The diagnosis is not clear. However, confocal microscopy shows clear tumor codes with palisading corresponding to basal cell carcinoma islands. Another example, in this case, of a non-pigmented tumor. Dermoscopy is featureless, whereas confocal microscopy is showing a basal cell tumor island with palisading, and this structure is very specific for the diagnosis. Giving an overview to the literature, we see that there are several studies examining more than 4,000 lesions that showed a very high sensitivity and specificity for melanoma diagnosis of confocal microscopy when applied to equivocal pigmented lesion. Even better accuracy has been detected for basal cell carcinoma, positioning the device as an effective tool for skin cancer diagnosis. Three interventional prospective studies also demonstrated that the use of confocal microscopy on dermoscopical equivocal lesion is able to reduce the number needed to excise. That means the number of benign lesions that are excised to diagnose a single melanoma. So, dermoscopy can provide an excellent accuracy with very high sensitivity.
the application of confocal microscopy on dermoscopically equivocal lesion is able to save over the 50% of excision of benign lesion with almost no risk to delay a melanoma diagnosis. The key message, too, is that refractance confocal microscopy for skin oncology finds its best indication in difficult to diagnose lesions. Confocal microscopy improves accuracy by detecting basal cell carcinoma and melanoma in early stage with high precision and reducing the excision of benign lesions. Thus, the best indication for confocal microscopy result the diagnosis of lesions that are difficult upon dermoscopy on examination. First example is the diagnosis of atypical dysplastic moles, especially in context of patients with multiple atypical moles. Here we take these two lesions as an example. At dermoscopy both lesions are equivocal and the melanoma cannot be ruled out. However, the first lesion presents a elongated nest without cytological atypia, orienting toward the diagnosis of a nevus based on confocal microscopy. Whereas the second lesion is showing a prominent cytological atypia with pleomorphic and highly reflecting cells corresponding to the diagnosis of a melanoma. Another important application is given by lesions located on the face for their cosmetical relevance. Here we have a case of a very small pigmented spot on the nose of this man. Upon dermoscopy, no clearer diagnosis could be achieved. Whereas confocal microscopy is able to show atypical cells, some are dendritic other are roundish, and the pattern is suggestive of a lentigo maligna, as confirmed by histopathology. Last but not least, hypopigmented lesions are a frequent dermoscopic challenge. In this case, we see a lesion with dotted vessels detectable upon dermoscopy, but a definite confident diagnosis is very difficult at this level. Confocal microscopy displays atypical roundish cells in the epidermis, forming non-discrete aggregates that are suggestive of melanoma diagnosis. In conclusion, the use of confocal microscopy in combination with clinical exam and dermoscopy provides the best diagnostic accuracy reduce unnecessary excision of more than 50% and minimize the risk of diagnostic mistakes.